to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20-10. Touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes! 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 Tornadoes take on the Forest Lake Rangers. The Rangers 10 and 10 overall, 7 and 7 in the Suburban East. Anoka 13 and 7 overall, 9 and 4 in the Northwest Suburban. The Tornadoes are having a really nice year. Steve Thomas along with Pete Anderson for the ball game tonight. But the Tornadoes are going to be a little short-handed. Yeah, they're, they're missing uh, one of their best players, a double-double player in, in Matty Frecking, uh, not playing here tonight. And uh, that's a big miss. Uh, you know, she's the last, second leading scorer. She's the leading rebounder. As we uh, take a look at the starters here for Forest Link, uh, Kendall Damon, Maddie Jerdy, Liv Fearing, Cassidy Pitzel, and Savannah Pent. And co-head coaches for the Forest Lake Rangers, Victoria Kimber and Jen Wagner share the duties. And there's the starters for Nick Novak and the Anoka Tornadoes. Yeah, we've got Laura Kuyan and Evan, Evan Eppinga in the backcourt up front, uh, replacing Frecking in the starting lineup is Deborah Ienni, Lydia Lakinen, and Lizzie Shokneck. I, I, you know, Steve, I look at uh, Lakinen as a as a person that we got to keep an eye on. She's going to probably have to step up a little bit with, uh, with Frecking being out. Yeah, no doubt uh, that uh, they are missing scoring and rebounding, as you pointed out, Pete with Fred King on the bench tonight. And tonight they're gonna celebrate the 1,000 point scores in Anoka Tornadoes Girls Hoops history. There are 10 of those, two on the current squad. Fred King, uh, she isn't gonna play tonight on, on the big night, but at the half, they'll all be honored. That's really cool. It's a, uh, you know, it's becoming a little bit more commonplace to, to recognize those milestones within within our sports, within uh, within these cultures of, of, you know, making sure that there, there's attainable goals by uh, by coming out and playing high school sports and, it, it, you know, basketball, hockey, getting to see these ceremonies, is, it, it never gets old. Yeah, Tornado's having a good year. They'd like to keep it going. Both these teams play in Section 7-4A, which right now is dominated by Andover. They're the clear favorite in Section 7. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, that section is, is Andover's at the top, but uh, once you get into that 2-3-4 uh, that range, you've got Centennial, Anoka, Blaine, and, uh, you know, the pecking order is pretty set right now. It's a coach's vote for the, for the section I instead of just straight QRF, but, uh, you know, the pecking order is pretty set. But it's going to be a wide open tournament in, in figuring out who uh, who gets that bid to the state tournament. Well, the Tornadoes have played well. They haven't had any long winning streaks or long losing streaks this year. They've been really consistent and averaging 70 points a game. Meanwhile, Forest Lake averaging just 48 a game. That could certainly be a factor. Tornadoes in black, Rangers in white. The tip controlled by the Tornadoes. Here's Epping in the back court. And she'll work with Kuyan. Kuyan on the right side. She's going to put it on the floor and try and drive. Kick it out. Epping and knocks it down on the right. Lob down low. Ayani. She's going to run it down in the corner. She couldn't handle it right away. And now it's Shokneck in the corner. Looks to the lob inside. Coming up on 10 on the shot clock. Ayani in the paint. Kicks it out in the corner. Epping had her three partially blocked. Jerdy blocked it. And she'll bring it up the floor for Forest Lake. Just underway in this ball game. Fearing swings it over to the right. Damon down low. Nice look. Shot missed. Rebound Shokneck. Still scoreless. And the Tornadoes have it in the front court. Shokneck way on the outside. She's another one that they're going to need to get involved more and maybe put more in a turnover on the Tornadoes. Yeah, right there, not, uh, you know, Shokneck not necessarily uh, realizing that she was getting that five-second call or, you know, count. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't really seem like the Forest Lake defender was was in her space. No. But, uh, you know, close enough if the uh, the official starts counting, you know, that's up to the coach or teammates to let her know, hey, give me the ball. get You know, move. You've got to go do something with it. 
Damon inbounds to Pitts, a leading scorer, 14.8 a game for Forest Lake. They play out of the Suburban East, of course. Here's Damon right of the lane, kicks it out. Now on the left, Pitzel swings it into the corner, driving in, putting up the runner is Damon, and that goes out of bounds. It was knocked out of bounds over there by Kuyan, and the Rangers are going to hang on. And, you know, we, you, you talked about the scoring totals for both these teams, Steve, in, in you know, 70 points a game. Pitzel the, the minutes for the tornadoes 48 well what does that tell us it tells us one team really really is going to you know try and play hard defense and keep the other off the board and uh, you know we'll, we'll keep an eye on force lake how they uh, how they plan to attack defensively as they've just forced their second turnover yeah I, and he tried to get it down low and it's a turnover right back to forest lake still no score just over a minute and a half into this game, driving in, Pant kicks it out in the corner, long three on the way, no by Pitzel in the rebound, easy rebound for the Tornadoes, and they will bring it up the floor. Eppinga has it, big knee brace on that left leg. Here's Kuyan down the lane, tried to put up the runner. That was blocked, out of there, clean block by Pitzel. On the break, it's Damon, went out into the corner, and that rolls out of bounds. Sloppy play early, still no score. Yeah, you know, if, if uh, we, we talked about uh, one team's going to want to try and score, one team's going to try and defend, and, uh, you know, thus far we're coming up on uh, two minutes into this game and, and no team has scored. So Forest Lake advantage early. Down low, they get it to Lackadin, and she goes up and draws a foul. First foul of the game is going to come on Forest Lake, and that'll be on Damon. And going to the line here will be Lack and an 11.9 a game, 10 rebounds. Another double double. She gets the first point of the game right there. Yeah, and that, that one's not going to count. Lane violation on the free throw. So 1 0 tornadoes. Three turnovers now already for, for the Tornadoes it, as they've got uh, that one point and, uh, you know, wiping away a, a free throw opportunity for, for Lockenden. Fearing between those circles. Swings it over to the right. This is Jerdy. Jerdy gets it into the paint and Damon out to the elbow. Pitzel tried to drive, turned it over. Another turnover. Yeah, you know, I mean, it... it, it you can see that, uh, you know, Force Lake is going to definitely, uh, you know, be a team that sits that uh, with that ball on the perimeter and just allows the, the off-ball movement in cutting into the lane. Anoka's going to rely a little bit more on their offense, trying to get uh, down low with Ieni and Shokneck. Another turnover on the Tornadoes. Epping had tried to get it to Ieni on the block, and it went off her hands out of bounds, so both teams struggling. We're coming up on three minutes into this half, and it's still 1-0 in Oka. This is Damon, now to the middle, and Penn. She'll try the three and hit the three. Averaging 7.3 a game, she's well on her way with a three. And the Rangers have the early lead to the free throw line, Ieni. She's going to put it on the floor, drive inside, kick it out in the corner. Lackanen shot no good. Or, excuse me, that was Shotneck in the corner. The other way, here come the Rangers. And that one up and in. Pitzel. 6-1 Forest Lake. Here's Eppinger the other way, drives in, put it off the glass. Beautiful driving bucket by Eppinger. Here comes Forest Lake the other way. Pant's going to drive in all the way to the hoop, miss the shot, and get fouled. She's going to get two, and that one's going to go on Lackanen. Yeah, last time down, I, I, I saw the Forest Lake coach, uh, you know, getting in the ear of the official. I think they're they're going to have a, a conversation about uh, players for Anoka standing in the lane. The previous possession, Ianni never left the lane for the entire possession. Free throw off, no good by Penn. She had that three a moment ago. First free throw of the night for Forest Lake. Just a couple of weeks to go in the regular season. Not a lot of games. She made it. She leads all with four, seven, three Rangers. Here's Kuyan running the point over the middle of the floor, over on the right. Shoknek. 
Once again, no Manny fracking tonight. Here's Kuyana at the free throw line, right of the lane, put up a tough shot. That's no good, couldn't get her own rebound in the corner. And it goes out of bounds for his slate ball. And now we got the first sub of the game coming in and for the Tornadoes, it's gonna be Drew Peterson averaging 5.5, 5.8 sophomore guard, and Kuyan will get a breather. Seven three Forest Lake. They've had their ups and downs this year. Look at their schedule. Longer losing streaks, some longer winning streaks. Out on top, three-pointer on the way. That's well wide. Rebound to Forest Lake up and in. Damon put it back. She's on the board. 9-3, Rangers. And now it's Peterson right back in the middle. Eppinga, free throw line, Jay up, heel of the rim, no good. And that rebound brought down there by Judy. Judy's gonna bring it up the floor. Spin, top of the key, give it up there. Fearing, she'll swing it to the right. And then that one goes down low. It's somehow picked up by Forest Lake. Shot was missed. And it's grabbed out of there by Peterson. Eppinga runs the floor, but travels before she got the shot away. Yeah, that was it. You know, the, the, the pass was out in front of her and her momentum going through it never allowed her to get that ball on the floor and, and get a dribble. Otherwise, uh, you know, she would have probably had a clear path into getting that layup. But, uh, you know, good passing is is uh, something that is really paramount. And you've seen it right now with Anoka. Fearing's jumper, no good. And the rebound hauled in by Lackanen. She's going to kick it out on top. Eppinga. Top of the key, trying to drive through a double team, goes into the corner, and it's grabbed there by Lack, and on the baseline, fires it all the way across, and off the hands of Epic, another turnover on the Tornadoes. Yeah, it's a, you know, it, those are things that you you, you want to try and, you know, work your way through. The fact that they're happening early, you know, you, you say, all right, well, I mean, it, we're down six, we'll get those turnovers out of our system here early, and clamp down later and clear it out here you go there's a steal peterson's gonna go all the way in get the layup clean steal and layup so peterson giving her team a lift off the bench and now forest lake back at it lob down low fearing the catch kicks it out further in the corner pent hits her second three of the game and she has seven rangers by seven yeah, she, I mean, when she's got the, that ball and she's got, you know, time to kind of catch that in rhythm, she's uh, looked pretty good and those shots have been pretty pure. Lob down low to Lyakunin, but it ends up in the hands of Fearing for Forest Lake. They'll bring it into the front court. Under 12 to go, they lead it 12 to 7. Slow start for the Tornadoes here on their home floor. They work it all the way around the perimeter. Pitzel tries the three, no good. And the rebound, Eppinga, she'll push it up the floor. She loves to run. She'll try the three. That short, long rebound grabbed there by Fearing. She'll go the other way. Damon stops, misses, and Shokneck the board for the Tornadoes. Good hustle play there for uh, really three Tornadoes. I mean, that could have been a, a you know walk-in layup, but challenging the layup, Forcing the miss and then Shokneck on the back end coming back as a trailer getting the rebound. Emma Huffman on the floor as well for the Tornadoes. This is Eppinga, drives right back in, put up the shot, drew the foul. It's probably going to go on Maddie Jurdy if it is, it, and it is her first, second team foul on Forest Lake, and you'll see it here. And it went right back at it, and that's a reach every time. Yeah, and, and, and you know, she, that's, a, that's such a, a, a veteran move there where she dribbles out away from the basket. All she's doing is creating space, allowing her to work back to the basket and create a good angle where she can get the leverage and, and you know, get to the line or, or make, a, make a layup. So she misses and will get one more. All right, that one's pure. She has three. And the Rangers lead by a six on the ball. Haley DeRue on the floor right now. This is Pitzel. Pitzel has a made three across the lane, down into the corner. Jurdy right along the baseline, up and in. Good power move. She drove right in, 14-6 now. Eppinga, nice driving bucket and a layup. Just a good, quick first step. She has five. And she's the leading scorer for the Tornadoes. She's going to kind of make this uh, this engine go. Obviously, she's got the ball in her hands quite a bit. 
But, uh, you know, tonight without her... Uh, Pitzel, no, that, that should have been whistled down. The and hit the support structure above, but the Tornadoes get it anyway. Here's Eppinga. Eppinga, she's going to drive down the lane, try the scoop shot, get fouled, go down. And that foul is going to go on Daru off the bench. Haley Daru picks up her first, third on the Rangers. Yeah, and, and so, you know, it, it, you, you look at... At Eppinga, you know, she's the leading scorer. She's going to be the the, the the top playmaker. But with the, you know, with fracking out, she might have to pick up her scoring. Instead of, you know, scoring around 20 a game or 18 a game, she's going to probably have to look at scoring 20 plus tonight. One more for her. More subs into the game. Lackening got a breather. Uh, she, two for four from the line, six points. A miss, a make, a miss, a make. So the pattern continues. Rangers with the ball in the front court. They get it down low. I any good defense down low. She's moving around. Now out on top. Here's Pitzel from the elbow. Off no good. And the board hauled down by Shoknek. Good rebound. Here's Kuyan back on the floor into the lane. Runner off the glass. No, got her own rebound. And now kicks it out in the corner. Eppinga from 17 with the right hand. That was an incredibly tough shot, and she hit it. That was pretty. Yeah, really good, uh, you know, follow through there. You know, Kuyan finding her in the corner after getting that loose ball in the paint. That's Good. a tough shot to hit. Pitzel goes down into the corner, searing back out to Pitzel, off no good. Long board into the corner, controlled by Huffman for the Tornadoes. And now it's Kuyan running the point. Kuyan will hand it off. Eppinga, always a threat to shoot the three, drives down to the block, had it stripped out of there. That was Espeline. And then running the floor the other way with the layup is Pitzel. She has five. 16 to 11, Rangers under nine to go. Kuyan drives all the way in, had that block and a foul on Pitzel. So she got ball and body there. And that'll be number four on Forest Lake. I think, you know, Pitzel was uh, with the timing of that whistle, thought she really got that one. And this is an opportunity here for the Tornadoes come back and, you know, get it into a, Potentially, it, it would have been a one possession game if she makes both, but this is the front end. So Shoknek will sit down, Lankin and back on the floor. That one off, no good. Rebound tapped around and controlled by Forest Lake. There's Forest Lake with the ball. Daru has it on the left, further down into the corner. Now they go to the free throw line, down to the block, back out. Driving in, Jurdy had it blocked out of there. Searing had it knocked away. They lob it ahead, Kuyan goes in, gets bumped, gets a shot side of the backboard. Boy, I thought she got bumped pretty pretty good out there. Yeah, you know, it was, a, it, it was a mad dash getting back, and, you know, I guess the official right there, you know, thought that uh, the Forest Lake defender got back and got in position, but... There was, uh, there was enough contact where it has to probably be called. Penn playing catch with Daru. Now to the free throw line. Dribbling out of there is Espeline. Amelia Espeline off the bench. And out in the middle, this is Penn. Seven on the shot clock. Down to five. They got to hurry. Daru in trouble and gives it up to Penn. They're going to say there's a foul late in the shot clock. Boy, that's yeah, a bummer. Kuyan kind of got caught in a, in a rough position and was really inside the, the, the bubble of Pent right there, and that uh, that's enough to draw the foul. It's a, it's a good call. It's a, it's a frustrating one, but it's a good call. Number two on the Tornadoes, four on Forest Lake, 740 to go in the half. Forest Lake right back at it. Daru over to the right, Pent. They get it down to the block. Searing sends it out. Now over to the left. This is Jurdy trying to drive in, had it knocked away. Really good defense by Ianni again to come and close on that, knock it away. Well, and, uh, you know, I think Anoka's starting to figure it out, too. You know, Forest Lake's not going to be really be a threat to 
really from anywhere, put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. They're, they're trying to create their shots, their movement with, uh, with ball movement and uh, you know see what they can get as, as far as easy shots. She inbounded, Penn got it back, put up a shot, missed it. Tornadoes the other way, Epping out on the left. Here's Lagkinen, Epping again. Tried to do the old pick and roll down to the block and it was a little too far for Lagkinen. Another turnover on the Tornadoes. They're really piling up down by five. Yeah, that's uh, that's seven by my count here in the, the first uh, 10 plus minutes of this game. And uh, you know, a number that I, I can imagine Coach Novak will be discussing at halftime. They work it inside, then right back out. Tornado's active defensively, not on the near side. Jerdy the three, down deep and out, and the board comes down to Eppinga. Boy, that went way down there. Peterson nails the three. Peterson having a half off the bench. She has five. And the Tornadoes right back in the ball game, down by two. They trailed by as many as eight. 14 to six, and now they're right back into it. Forest Lake gets it inside. They've been able to do that a lot tonight. Fearing had it in the corner and it's stolen away. Here's Peterson again. Drew Peterson missed the layup. Epping up following the play. Big collision, kick ball. And Forest Lake is gonna get it. Oh, Peterson would love to have that one back. Yeah, you know, it, she made such a good play, such a great anticipation play on the, uh, on the steal. And, you know, just built up a little momentum thinking that she had some trailers behind her trying to defend. Fearing down in the corner, they, they get it down low in a travel. That is a travel on Lauren Searing. And Forest Lake turns it over. They've been able to get it inside, but they haven't been able to do anything with it down low. Yeah, you know, the, well, and, and a lot of that goes to the to the size advantage that uh, that Anoka has between between uh, Shoknecht and and Iani and Lackanen. But uh, you know, you, you know, not being able to finish at the at the rim is going to be a big deal for Forest Lake if they're going to rely on ball movement the entire after or entire evening. Kuyan Long running the floor and one for Daru. Haley Daru, a chance for a three-point play, and Forest Lake builds her lead back to four. And she knocks it down. Tornado ball after that three-point play by Daru. And now Anoka down by five. Eppinga had it partially blocked. That, that was partially blocked by Daru, who completed the three-point play. And now the Rangers right back at it with Penn. Goes down into the corner, and Damon now to the elbow, and they fire it down low, and it's turned over. 5.22 to go in the half. It has not been a work of art to this point. You know, you can you, we can say offensively it's been a struggle for both teams, but to, you know, really, you can give a lot of that credit to the defense. So you know, if you're a fan of defense and you're a fan of uh, that art, and now a turnover, foul off the ball. That's going to go on Lackanen for the Tornadoes. No, I think they gave no, that one time. Ianni, yeah, yeah, the illegal Ianni. screen. She was moving uh, right to. First on Ianni, by the way. Right to left and, you know, just draw the, that foul right there. The official very uh, clear calling that one right away. Damon out on the wing. They get it to the free throw line. Jerdy over on the right side. Fearing missed a shot. Rebound Ianni. And then she'll give it up. And here comes Lackanen into the front court. Lackanen right of the lane. Gives it up to Ianni, beautiful feed. Ianni's got the bucket, her first points. And it's 19-16, timeout on the floor. 4.51 to go, that was that was nice uh, play down on the low post. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and, and, and you know, Lackanen has shown, you know, she's brought the ball up a handful of times as well. She's got, a, you know, a little bit of handle to her game and, you know, being able to get into, uh, into the paint into some uh, you know dirty area, and as soon as that second defender came over for help, she found the wide open Iani on the backside. 
1916, 4.51 to go in the half. Quick recap of the scoring for Anoka. Eight points for Eppinga. Five for Drew Peterson off the bench. Two for Ianni a moment ago. Lacking in just one. Uh, Kuyan hasn't scored 0 for 2 at the line. Meanwhile, for Forest Lake, Damon 2, Jerdy 2, 5 for Pitzel, 7 for Penn, and then Haley DeRue with the three-point play off the bench. And here are the Rangers right here with Damon. They work it down further to Jerdy. They get it to the free throw line down on the deck. Turnover. Epping it right back the other way. Up with the left hand. No, a little too hard. Forest Lake back with 4.30 to go on the half. Here's Damon right side to the top. Pitzel to the free throw line. That's Fearing. Once again, Anoka all over it defensively. Now they'll try the three, and that one's long by Damon. Rebound on the deck. Put up, partially blocked. Still right back in the hands of Fearing. And then over to Jerdy and missed. To the near corner, Eppinga finally grabs for the Tornadoes. She'll fire it ahead. Peterson grabs. Mid-range jumper partially blocked. Forrest Lake back the other way. Last, Under four to go. The last, uh, or three of the last four shot attempts from both teams blocked. Three-pointer. That's short. No good by Pitzel. Rebound to the Tornadoes. Shoknek on the floor with the board. And now it's Annie Shoknek down in the corner. It's going to drive baseline. Got bumped. And that blocking foul is going to go on Drew. That, that, that's a foul every time. Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> and, you know, it, one thing there for Drew is, you know, she'd already done her job. She, right. she had gotten Shoknek moving in the direction where she had nowhere else to go. All you have to do is hold your ground. You don't need to take that extra step and draw that foul. Peterson mid-range jumper off no good. And a rebound grab by Fearing. She'll bring it up the floor, give it up on the wing. Here's DeRue. Now out on top, it's Jerdy. Jerdy to the free throw line and fearing. And they get it down to the block. Inside, shot up, no good. Fearing got the shot away, and I think this is going to be on Ianni. It is on Ianni, so that, that'll be two for her. Team fouls are even at five apiece. 322 to go in the half. Fearing at the line as and scored. They're three of four from the line in the game. I don't know. I have them at five turnovers. Is that what you have? Forest Lake with five? Forest Lake, I have five. Yeah, seven for Anoka. And that one bounces out of there. And the rebound comes down to Lack, and she'll give it up. Here's Appinga trotting it up the floor as we approach three to go on the half. Right down the lane, kicks it out in the corner. And that's another turnover on Anoka. Peterson wasn't ready in the corner. And, you know, this uh, This is what the defense of Forest Lake does. You know, they, they're going to give you something right up until you think you have it. You don't, and you throw the ball away. You throw a, you, you have to rush your pass option. Out on the right side, shot off, no good. Rebound to Forest Lake. And now they'll kick it outside. Damon down in the corner. Jerdy, no. And the rebound, Shoknak had the rebounding position and is going to get the board. And the foul's going to go on Forest Lake. That's an over the back on Fearing. Good job by Shoknak to grab that board and draw the foul. Thought for sure they were going to call that one the held ball. Uh, you know, you've seen that yep. come out a lot more. I feel like, uh, you know, the, the officials quick to, to give that. But to, in this situation, they uh, they determined that Shoknak had position. And knocking that one down, Emma Huffman with points off the bench. One point game. 225 to go on the half. Huffman hits a three. Out on the left, here's Damon. They get it down low in the post. Shot up, but it draws a foul. They got it into Searing. And she's going to go to the line. Choknek's going to pick up her first. Six-team foul, and those fouls, by the way, are even. Searing at the line. 2.3 a game. That one's no good. One more on the way. Rangers didn't lead right out of the gate. Anoka had the 1-0 lead. 
that they have led since then. That one off no good, and the rebound goes out of bounds off Forest Lake. Thought maybe it could have gone out of bounds off Shoknak, but she didn't touch it. The official is right here. Now it's Eppinga. She has eight in the first half. That one tipped away. She got it back. Good D there by Jerdy. She'll drive into the block, put it off the glass, get it to go. Another tough shot. And the Tornadoes have a one-point lead. Out of the middle and Damon. Down into the corner, Jerdy. Gets it into the paint. Pent got fouled. That's it. I think that's on Ep uh, Lackanen. That is. Yeah. Number two on her, seventh on the Tornadoes. You're going to get two anyway. Penn, now two or three from the line with eight points. And we're tied at 21. Daru back on the floor, getting a ton of minutes off the bench. He has three points, two fouls. That one's good. She puts them way up there, and they, they fall. Pretty good free throw. Right back the other way, driving in. Eppingham missed it. On the break the other way, Damon stops, went up. Had that block, but it goes out of bounds. Good hustle play by Lackanen to get down there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, you kind of think, you know, there should have been some communication there as uh, behind Damon. She had her teammate right there on the on the block. She All she had to do is give that up and easy layup. But uh, gives the Anoka defense another opportunity for a stop. Jerdy out on the left. 15 on the shot clock. Nice feed down low to Damon. She gets fouled, and that foul is going to go on Huffman. Emma Huffman with her first, eighth on the Tornadoes. And, and you know, this is obviously, a, you know, part of the, the game plan here for the Rangers as uh, they work that ball movement and they get that opportunity to get that ball into the high post and into the low post and, you know, put the shot up, get it up to the rim, and if, if nothing else, it, you get, get to the free throw line and an opportunity to take free, two free throws, see if you can extend the lead. That one's good. She has three. And the Rangers are up by two as we close in on one to go on the half. Here's Eppinga. He's made some tough shots in this game. Kuyan couldn't take the handoff. Lackanen to the cutter. Eppinga off the glass. Missed it. Fights for the rebound. And it's finally going to be controlled by Forest Lake. Kuyan came back to help and just picked up a foul. And that one's an unlucky one. I mean, it, it, I don't know if she actually got her. The ball popped up and hit, uh, hit the, hit Pent in the face there. I don't know if Kuyan got a piece or not. I don't, I. That's pretty close. I think she got ball and the ball pops up and hits her in the face. And so, you know, the official sees that, that head snap up there and assumes there's contact. Pent at the line. That one off no good. And the rebound choked now. So Pent misses the front end. Tornadoes get it inside. Peterson to Huffman up no good. And the rebound, Damon, 40 to go on the half. Forrest Lake by two in the ball. They get it inside. Nice look. Shot missed by Damon. That was a great hit feet inside by Espelin. Yeah, you know, she had that opportunity. She's got to, you know, just get that one high off of the off of the square and get that in. You can't uh, try and squeak that one in past the the rim. Eppinga with it. Going to walk it up the floor with 25. Shot clock off. And now Peterson will grab. Peterson's going to put it on the floor, drive down to the block, put it up, miss a shot. Rebound fought for by Shotnack. And on that jump ball, Forest Lake's going to get it. 
no doubt the pace of this game is what Forest Lake wants. Averaging 48, they, they like to slow it down. They like to really work that shot clock. They get it into the front court and pen. Five to go in the half. They get it out on top. Three-pointer off, no good. Rebound back up and in by Damon. And Forest Lake will have a four-point lead, 25-21 at the half and we'll keep it right here because those thousand point scores are going to be in the, uh, honored by the Anoka Tornadoes. Two on the current roster, 10 overall, P. You know that and you know I get it. You know I, I've kind of done the math here as we've got you know in in the Northwest Suburban Conference you know we, it seems like we're, we're now awarding more 1,000 point scores and what that usually comes out to is you know, four years of adri averaging about 10 points a game is what that is. If it's a three-year player, you probably got to average closer to 15. Two-year player, you're averaging over 20. Um, you know, and then you go and you see a, a, a freshman and sophomore and Maddie Green may hit, already hitting 3,000 points. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you, you like to see, you know, this, this 1,000-point uh, scoring club. Yeah, and of course, two current players out there, one not in the lineup tonight, Maddie Fracking, just a junior, averaging 16.8 a game, and of course, uh, Evan Eppinga, the other current player, and we'll turn it over for that 1,000-point ceremony. That is a great ceremony and a lot of fun, and the fans really into it. Anoka's got a little work to do in a half number two if they're going to make this a real happy night. Roar back and beat Forest Lake. The Rangers lead it 25-21, Pete. 
you know, it, it, it's a game of defense. Uh, the, the, the turnovers have been uh, really paramount for both teams. But, uh, you know, it's the ball movement for Forest Lake that's allowed them to take that four-point lead. If Anoka can uh, curb those turnovers, they've got a really good chance in the second half. Epping leads Anoka with 10, 9 for Pent for Forest Lake. Half number two on the way here on QCTV. I think most teams start with the same goals, ultimately get down to St. Paul at the end of the season. We have a stacked section, um, so I mean, I, I think it's one of the deepest ones in the state. But, you know, ultimately it's just for the girls to come together um, and be able to say that at the end of the season they had no regrets. They just left everything on the ice and they gave it everything they had. I think that this season we're going to succeed because we're going to lean off of each other and learn from each other and we're going to grow from that and have a great team environment. The personality of our team is like on a very uplifting environment. It's a very, it's full of girls who are willing to learn from each other and to help each other to succeed more. Uh, we're all like really good friends and teammates and we all like, work very hard together. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good mix of some senior leadership uh, with some youth um, and I think when it all comes together it's going to be fun to watch. Watch us this year, you know, see how far we make it. <laughs> Let's go CPCR. <laughs> the Andover's Fun Fest beer tent for the typical pancake breakfast. Well, the Andover Lions have something new this winter season. Whether you call it cornhole or bags, the Andover Lions invite you to their first annual Lions Bags fundraiser. Yeah, Lions Club is known for doing kind of a lot of the same fundraisers. One of the big ones people have probably heard of is the pancake breakfast. and. Recently we just had our Christmas party and the governor of the Lions, he actually said, you know, think outside the box and, and do things that you enjoy. And that's actually how this was definitely, this idea was born because it's something I have no problem spending my time creating and volunteering because it's, it's actually something that I really enjoy and think is fun. And I'm hoping that um, the community will think so too. I know I've played the last a couple years, we've been involved in the Cornell Tournament at Fun Fest, and that's always been a really popular um, event. So I'm hoping that a lot of those same teams will come in and play and support this one. With food and beverages available for purchase and fun with friends, you'll stay warm in the courtyards of Andover Banquet Room while giving back to the community through the Andover Lions. We are doing a Saturday, January 20th, here at the Courtyards of Andover. We, start, we want to start playing right at noon, so please come register at 11 a.m. 11 to noon, come register your team. And yeah, we'll have everything set up so we can start throwing bags right away at noon. To register your team or for more information, email Kathy. You can also look on their Facebook page or email AndoverMNLions at Outlook.com. So I definitely want to encourage people in the community to come, whether you are on a team or not, just because it can be very entertaining to just even come watch the other teams. Don't miss out on a chance to have fun and make a positive impact at the same time. Looking back on 2023, we had an incredible year in the city of Champlin. It was a really fabulous 2023. A lot of new excitement with Mississippi Crossings finally being open. Our first year to do a few of the performances in the outdoor performance area and let the community see what was built for them. Um, it was a wonderful year from just the standpoint of our Parks and Rec Department being able to offer the community the same annual events that they've come to expect and love. And now we're into 2024 and we're excited to talk about everything that's ahead and returning, especially some of those annual events that our community loves so much from 2023. Starting with the announcement that the Trout Ice Fishing Contest will now be known as the Frostbite 500. 
So the Trout Ice Fishing Contest is an annual event. This will be the fifth year in a row. We're actually really excited because we're going to rename the event. We're gonna actually give it a real name this year. Former Mayor Ryan Karasik has created um, a new brand that we're going to roll out on the day of the event, but we could give you a little sneak preview. Um, it's going to become the Champlain Frostbite 500, and we're really excited to have a chance to finally give it a name and be able to tell the community that it is here to stay, thanks to our sponsor, former Mayor Ryan Karasik. From Father Hennepin Festival to the return of the Summer Stage Series at Mississippi Crossings, 2024 is a stacked year in Champlain. One of the most exciting things that residents can look forward to in 2024 is the expansion of the Father Hennepin Festival. It used to be three days, and this year, for the first time ever, it's moving to a four-day event, where it's actually going to start on Thursday, June 6th. So it's really exciting timing because I believe all of the area schools get out of school on that Thursday, and the carnival will be open. So that's very exciting because usually kids have to wait till Friday, Saturday, Sunday to do the rides. But this year, for the first year ever, we're going to kick off the MC Summer Series on that Thursday, June 6th, as part of the four-day Father Hennepin Festival kickoff. And they'll be able to listen to live music for free on the river. Even if you're on West River Road riding rides, you'll be able to hear. And then probably the most exciting announcement is the singer, the artist for the night performing, um, will be Anderson Daniels, our hometown country music favorite. He'll be returning to the crossings for the first time since grand opening, and we're really excited to welcome him back to town and have him kick off our hometown festival in his own hometown. Heading down West River Road in Champlain, you may notice some construction happening at the Chandler Park site. Hey, that construction is an effort to provide additional parking and will make a significant improvement to the Mississippi Crossings development area. The Mississippi Crossings proved to be a fun, exciting, and beautiful addition to the community in 2023. The construction at Chandler Park will provide more parking opportunities going into 2024. To stay up to date, be sure to follow QCTV as well as the City of Champlain for all updates related to construction in your community. Hi there, I'm Cameron Kaitonen, City of Andover Natural Resources Technician. I'm here to talk about the Nature Preserve Commission, formerly known as the Open Space Advisory Commission, which is an advisory board to the City Council. This group is primarily tasked with management and maintenance decisions of the four nature preserves in the City of Andover. This group was originally formed in 2006 to help decide what properties to purchase after the approved $2 million bond referendum that same year. After that referendum went through, the group helped to decide on four preserves that were purchased. The group is also tasked with looking at potential funding options for potentially buying new land in the city. The group generally meets quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month at around 6 p.m. So in beginning in November, December, we will be looking for uh, new members to the group. There will be information in the no November, December edition of the city newsletter, which will outline the application uh, process uh, and instructions for if you are interested in applying. So if you are interested in the outdoors, interested in being a part of the community and being uh, working as, along with the city of Andover, and also, would like to meet new people, this might be a great opportunity for you. Hi, this is Cole with Anoka County SHIP and I have a question for you. When was the last time you moved from your seat? Movement makes all the difference in living the healthiest life you can, especially if you're working from home or the office where you're probably sitting down all day. So whether it's getting up for a cup of coffee or walking over to check out the window, a little bit of movement can make a lot of difference for your health. So get up and get moving with Anoka County SHIP. 
every day at goanokacounty.org. Thanks. The Anoka Field House girls hoops tonight. The Tornadoes hosting the Forest Lake Rangers, and Forest Lake leads at 25-21 at the half. Maddie Fracking averaging 16.8 and 11 rebounds a game. Not available in the game tonight, and the Tornadoes have struggled with their offense. Yeah, it's uh, it, it you know it has come primarily from Evan Eppinga, and then you know a couple of uh, shots here or there, but you know blocks and turnovers have been the key for Forest Lake if they as they've kept Anoka very shy of their uh, their scoring average and right here you see at the end of the half of the Rangers that was uh, Damon scoring yeah both teams have played pretty well defensively but the, the, the tornadoes have just been out of sorts they, they've been leading on Eppinga and she leads all with 10 points by the way Savannah Pant leading uh, Forest Lake with nine once again, both teams really getting after it. A lot of forced turnovers in the half as well, Pete. Yeah, you know, and that's a, that's a big key here to Forest Lake's defense and their attack. And, uh, you know, Anoka has, has gotten their fair share, but just not enough. And we're back to live action. The Tornado's trying to get it down low to Deborah Ienny, and it was a turnover on Anoka. And Forest Lake has the lead and the ball in the front court down to our right. And they're wearing white here on the road. And they get it to Pent, their leading score with nine points in the half. And typically they'll work it around the perimeter and then just go down to the low post. Here's a three point try off no good by Pitzel. And it goes out of bounds and the Tornadoes are gonna get it. And uh, Drew Peterson got the start here in the half over Laurel Kuyan running the point. And Peterson did a good job, five points off the bench. Yeah, you know, she had, uh, as we saw there in the first half recap, she had a big steal that uh, led to points and, uh, you know, played some solid defense as well. So, you know, Coach Novak giving her some run. Peterson with it. Goes to the top of the key off to the right. This is Eppinga. Eppinga gets it right back into the middle. Shokneck, they get it down low. Ianni in the paint to the right block. Put it up. Off. No good. But the first ball of the half is going to go on Forest Lake and Fearing. That'll be number two on Liv Fearing. And, and you see right here, you just kind of, you know, give it to Ianni. Let her go to work, and, and she's got the advantage there against Fearing. Is able to get a decent shot look, and then, uh, you know, nearly got to the end one try. And Ianni will get one more. She has three in the game. First made free throw. Tornado struggled from the line. Three of eight in the first half. That one off, no good, and the rebound comes down to Lydia Lack, and then right back to Ianni down the lane. That was blocked out of there. She fights to get it back. Outside Shokneck, now to the top, Eppinga, no, and the rebound comes into the corner, and Forest Lake's going to grab it. And they'll beat the trap and get it into the front court. And they'll set it up. This is Damon. Tornado's down by three. They had the early lead 1-0. Other than that, they have never led in this game. Here's Pitzel. Now to the middle. 15 on the shot clock. Over to the right side. Pitzel again. Down in the corner. This is Jurdy. They work the perimeter. Damon, she'll try the three and hit the three. And she has eight points. Tornado's right back the other way. Epping at a miss. I need the rebound. Back up. No. Tapped out of there. Grabbed by Damon. Damon running the floor. Tornadoes get back well. 16 minutes to go on the half. Over on the left side. This is Jurdy. That three no good. Rebound. Lacking and can't control. And they're going to call a jump ball. And Forest Lake's going to hang on. Epping it right down there on the floor. And couldn't control. And on the inbound, Pitzel in front of the Forest Lake bench. 15.51 to go, and now Jurdy in the middle. Over to the right side, Damon. Out of the top, Pitzel. They get it inside, Pent. Gets it on the baseline, stepped out of bounds. She knew it, too. 
You know, and you know that's the one thing that in the first half, Forest Lake was so good. They're 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 so good at getting to their spots, and you know, knowing exactly where their pass is, what the movement is, what that read is, and uh, you know, that time is just a, a little bit of a, a mental mistake there on Forest Lake. Peterson tries the three, no, and the rebound, Jerdy. Jerdy's going to bring it up the floor for Forest Lake, leading by six. Off on the left, Pitzel. She's going to drive in, put up the runner. Really tough shot. That came up short and back the other way. Here's Eppinga. Eppinga is going to push it in, kick it out in the corner. Peterson wide open, three. No rebound, grabbed by the Rangers. And then a foul, Schoknack. Trying to get back. They'll pick up the foul, and that'll be a second on her and the first on the Tornadoes. Uh, they called that one on, uh, on Peterson, which is probably oh, wow. a... Yeah, that's where they caught the, the contact uh, initially on Peterson. So that's uh, probably a good thing here for for the Tornadoes that it goes on her instead of the second. First on, on Peterson, yeah. Shoknek. Shoknek has one. Lackanen with two. Kuyan with two. At the free throw line, Jerdy out on the corner. Three ball on the way. That's out of there. No good by Damon. And the rebound comes to the Tornadoes into the front court. Peterson on the right drives in. She got fouled. They're going to call Pitzel with the foul. You know, and I think, you know, coming out of this, it's still early here, but it, it kind of looks like Novak and the Tornadoes are, are pushing Forest Lake into shooting those threes. They've already attempted, uh, you know, three here in the second half, whereas, uh, you know, if they let that ball movement happen, they're starting to get easy layups uh, down low. They don't want to get that, so let, uh, let Forest Lake shoot. Lackin got a shot away. Couldn't hit the shot. And then we call a jump. I think they called yeah, that they a help called ball. A, they called a jump ball, so may have been a foul. They called the jump. Tornadoes hang on anyway. They're going to hit to the outside, Nyani. And she'll hand it off. Here's Eppinga. Eppinga back to Nyani. Down on the block. Put up the shot. That's blocked out of there. Lauren Searing blocked it out of there. Tornadoes will get the ball again. Epping it inbound. Gets it in the corner. Now it's going to drive to the free throw line. Feed it down low. And lack it in and one. She has three. Could be four. Nice two-player game. Yeah, you know, it, the Tornadoes are, are coming off and, and, you know, trying different things. And, you know, there they had back-to-back -back opportunities with Inbounding the ball underneath their, that basket, two different plays and uh, two different results. It uh, definitely plays or pays off. Derue off the bench. Haley Derue, she had three in the first half. Derue is there. She had two fouls as well. Here's Jerdy. Jerdy on the near side in the paint. And that was Damon couldn't hang on to it. Lagkinen picks it up. She'll bring it up the floor. Lagkinen. Sets up shop. Down in the corner, Ianni. They get it inside. She'll kick it out. Epping a three. No long rebound. Ripped down there by Searing. And here comes Forrest Lake. Jerdy. Jerdy gives it up in the lane. Double team comes. And that one's tied up. That'll be Forrest Lake ball. Ianni did a good job to get to that. And good footwork, you know, making sure she wasn't reaching across or, you know, doing anything. She went and she moved her body. She got in a position where she can grab that ball cleanly. And, uh, you know, it was a held ball, but it works out. Pent, the shot, no. And the rebound, and now it's Kuyan. Laurel Kuyan brings it up the floor, drives all the way in, put it off the glass. No, the rebound brought down by Searing. Here comes Forrest Lake running the floor. Damon fumbled it and then traveled. Bobbled it and then walked. 13.08 to go. That's already three turnovers for Forest Lake here this half. What's the total you've got for? I've got eight total for them, and uh, we're now at eight for the Tornadoes as well. Epping goes down the lane. She turns it over. Right back the other way comes Penn, gives it up on the wing. Damon. Damon now further out on top to Jerdy. I'll swing it down into the corner. Pence over there. Still their leading scorer had nine at the half. 
Forest Lakes managed three so far here in the half, 28-25. There's a three ball, and that rattles around and drops for Daru. She has six, 31-25. Timeout, 12-34 to go on the game, and we'll keep it right here. Yeah, you know, uh, good ball movement there. We take a look at the Northwest Suburban Conference and over a top at 13-0. Uh, Maple Grove also has an undefeated record in the conference. And then Centennial 9-3, and three, and there's Anoka at 9-4. and four. You know, they're playing really good basketball. They're, they're beating the teams they're supposed to beat. They're hanging with the teams that they're, they're looking up at. Uh, you know, I've had co multiple conversations with Andover head coach Blake Nichols, and, you know, he's got nothing but great things to say about this Anoka team. They're really good. He goes, they're... They're very physical. They play in the paint in a, in a style that that should give Andover fits. And uh, he said, you know, luckily for us, they, they came out and played their two best games of the year when they played Anoka earlier this year. Otherwise, you know, Anoka's maybe looking at a at 11 and two record, and and the Andover sitting at 11 and two as well. Yeah, no no doubt at the top of the league though. Outstanding teams in Andover and Maple Grove Centennial also very good. And, and you're right. Maddie fracking out of the lineup tonight it j just gives Anoka a completely different look. They really miss her in the ball game tonight. Well, I, I, you know, one thing too, it, it, it we, we've seen a change from Coach Novak and what they've done offensively. Um, you know, early in the game, it was we're going to try and let Evan Epping a cook, and we're going to give her a lot of opportunities, put the ball in her hand, and see what she can do. Now they're, you know, they're they're getting the ball out of her hands and letting other players move a little bit more. They're getting better shots just like that. Yeah, and that's Kuya. Nice feet inside and that's lacking and she has five and a half, six in the game. And they're, they're getting her more involved. Lydia Lackanen. Quiet first half, but certainly has come alive to lead the Tornadoes with five in this half. And they're down by four. Here's a three that's going to come up short, and that rebound's going to go out of bounds. And in the ball game now for the Tornadoes, Tessa Lirum, 2.5 a game, 5'8 junior Lirum on the floor for Anoka for the first time tonight. So she's getting some minutes with 12 to go in the game, and the Tornadoes still very much in it, down by four. You know, at this point, you, you, you've, you've not played a great you know the, a great game you game you haven't played up to your your uh, your plan but you're still in it why not give a, you know a player off your bench a little bit of, of time here see what she can do in a tough game and that one off no good terrific rebound she just couldn't finish and that was lacking and here comes forest lake up by four and now they'll move it to journey in the middle 11.24 to go and out of the free throw line, Penn. She hasn't scored here in the half. They have six points in this half. And we're coming up on seven minutes in. It has been a low scoring ball game. Very low considering there's a shot clock involved. Ten to go there. This is Jerdy. And we have a foul. And this is going to be on Kuyan. That'll be number three on her. First player in the game with three fouls and just like that drew peterson coming back in the game for the tornadoes and you know you can see the frustration in kuyan and laurel you know she's uh, she's had some good looks she's had some good opportunities but you know she's getting called for the foul she's not getting foul calls when she thinks she gets fouled out at the free throw line pitzel drives into the lane put up a shot it's batted around grabbed by the tornadoes shoknet grabs it eppinga Peterson on the right, cut her down the lane, lack it in the bucket, and one. Lackadon's come alive, seven in the half, eight in the game. What a great feed there by Lirum. You know, getting that 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 ball, she had her eyes on the rim, and then late, here comes Lackadon, and she put it right on her. There's a, It made it real easy for Lydia to get that one in and then add the end one. She has nine, second three-point play of the half. Tornadoes within one. They're on a 5-0 run right back the other way. They fall asleep, and that's a layup for Damon. She has five in each half. They just didn't get back. Good break by Forest Lake. And out of the free throw line, lacking in right of the lane, stops. We got a foul, no bucket. That was a foul before the shot. I think this is, yeah, that was an offensive foul. Oh, wow, they're going to call a charge on Lackin. And How about that? Number three on her. Let's see it right here. Yep, elbow. 
Elbow extended for his flake on the break. Driving in, putting up the shot, getting the bucket and one. Haley Daru. Daru now has eight in the game off the bench. And Forrest Lake, right now in a four a run, could be five. Team falls, by the way, are even now at four apiece. With 10 31 to go in the game, that could be a factor. That off, no good, and the rebound, choke neck. You know, we've talked about how this is a section, uh, you know, tournament match, a potential matchup. Uh, you know, the seeds are pretty, you know, locked in first uh, first four, five, as far as who's beat who and, and what that is. It's a coach's vote. But, uh, you know, this is a, you know, could easily be a semifinal matchup. And this is something that uh, could cause Anoka a little bit concerned. Peterson from the elbow, she has seven, 35-32. 10 to go in the game. This is Pent down into the corner, Fearing. Fearing's going to dribble out of there. Hand it off to Damon. Once again, Pent in the corner. The cutter blocked out of their lack, and they haven't quite a half. That's blocked out of there. Forest Lake's going to hang on. Tornado's down by three. We talked about lacking in at the, you know, at the outset that that she was probably going to have to be somebody that uh, that stepped up. You know, it, it rebounds for sure. Uh, offensively, Anoka would love to have her make up some of those points that uh, that they're missing from fracking. Forest Lake with the ball into the corner. Damon trying to drive on Eppinga. Right back to the middle, off to the left. It's a three ball that's going to come up short. The rebound, Peterson. Drew Peterson's played some key minutes. She's going to go right back at it, down to the block, have it blocked out of there. And Forest Lake running the other way. Here come the Rangers. Driving baseline, putting it off the glass, and one opportunity for Haley Daru. She has eight off the bench. Now 10. 37-32, so the tornado has got close. 31-30, and Forest Lake extending the lead to five. Could be six. Durant, a three-point play in the first half. Has a main three here in the second. Daru right back at it. That out of there, no good. And the rebound, Shoknak, good job. Good rebounding position. Tornado still in it. 9-10 to go. Shoknak to the outside. Stops her, or continues her dribble. Now gets it further outside. Ianni put up the shot out of there. No good. Fight for the rebound. And we got a jump ball situation. Stays here with, uh, with Anoka. That was Abby Holmgrenson get uh, kind of stuck in traffic. Ninth grader out there, Abby Holmgrenson, 5'3", ninth grader. It's a lot of minutes in the JV game, and that's stolen away by Pitzel. Turnover on the Tornadoes, under nine to go, down by five, Forest Lake. It's 31-30, and uh, the Rangers have extended the lead. Right back out on top, fearing, no. Rebound and bucket for Pitzel. And an and one opportunity, wow. 39-32. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, just some more ball movement. You kind of had uh, a little Princeton offense running there with the, the back cut instead of, you know, flashing to the to the high post or the free throw line. And uh, that time it was a, a catch in the back cut and then uh, kicking it out. A free throw no good. Rebound by Annie. She'll give it up. And here comes Eppinga. Eppinga drives in, missed the layup. And we got a foul on the drive. And then from the official trailing the play, that'll go on Jerdy. That'll be her second. By the way, the previous foul was on Liram for the Tornadoes, number two on her. Six fouls on Anoka, five on Forest Lake. Eppinga hit the free throw in her first points of the half. She now has 11 in the game. And that one falls for Evan. Rangers the lead and the ball. Anoka led it 1-0, and then Forest Lake scored the next six. And really have never looked back. Here's a three, and that falls. That is Daru. Daru 10 in the half, 13 in the game. The Tornado's in a bit of trouble down by eight. 
Lahatkinen in the corner. Eppinga, she's going to try the three. Long rebound to the corner. And the Tornadoes can't run it down. Romgrenson couldn't get to it. 8-1 to go, and now Anoka needs a stop. Yeah, they, you know, this is uh, this is going to be the time where, I, you know, I have to imagine if, uh, you know, there's a, a another three made. Um, they get it down low, shot missed by Jurdy. Gets a rebound, it's going to dribble out of there. Get it to the top, Pitzel the three, boom. Wow. Pitzel five in each half. 45-34, and just like that, Forest Lake has extended their lead to 11, and driving to the bucket, Eppinga got fouled. She'll get free throws. It was 31-30. That is a 14-4 run. Wow. That'll be on Jerdy, your third. Team falls are even at six. Eppinga at the line. Good news clock stopped at the moment. Eppinga now is 13 in the game, but... It climbed to within one and then she got them both. That's a start. Ten point game. And that one off Epping out of bounds. Tried to come into the near corner and Daru. <laughs> Daru's had quite a half. Two made threes. Yeah, Searing, you know, probably needs to hold on to that one. It is Eppinga who deflected that was on the near side of the basket away from her. There's a Daru three. Or excuse me, that's Pitzel. She is eight and a half, 13 in the game. 48-36, Forest Lake by 12. Miss, back up it in, Ianni. Ianni with the board and bucket. She has five in the game. 48-38. Once again, with seven to go in the game, still time, and then Forrest Lake throws it away, fearing just threw it across the floor, nobody home. That's a big turnover. Now you just have to chip away. Just one, one possession at a time. Kuyana on the floor. Once again, the ninth grader, Holmgrenson sat down. Epping a three. Off the glass and in. How about that? Evan Epping a she has seven and a half, 17 in the game, 48-41. Driving in, Jurdy goes across, almost turned it over. Long range two, no, rebound tapped around. It'll end up with Forrest Lake. Boy, they got a break there. A couple of them there, you know, a couple of just balls bouncing the, just the right way for Forrest Lake. Here's Daru, drives in, missed the shot. Rebound, Epping, a one on three, running the floor, 6.15 to go. She pulls out, tries the three, partially blocked. And then the foul. That's going to go against Epping, yeah. trying to. Yeah, the hold. Pull. I think that's her first. We'll go to the other end and get a front end of a one and one. Yeah, number one on her, but. She tried the quick three and it got blocked and then she got called for the foul. I think they're saying that's a, it's an offensive foul, so that's why there's no free throws here. That's a... I'm not sure about that. I don't agree, but that's why that's a... We're here, there, there, and we'll move on. Forrest Lake the ball coming up on six to go. There, there wasn't a lot of howling from the Forest Lake bench about that one. This is Jurdy. Out on the left, another three, off no good, and the rebound, lacking in. Then she got tied up. Forest Lake's going to get it back. Wow. That's a great play. A really, really heads-up play there by DeRue. I mean, we've talked about her offense here this half and how she's really come alive and uh, and, and put – she's up to, what, 13 points yeah, here? 13. Um, which is, is obviously above her average, and, uh, you know – but that's a hustle play. That's a, that's a, you know, who wants it more? Pitzel down in the corner. She'll try the three. That's well long. Rebound on the back side. Picked up by Fearing. Forest Lake keeps it alive. They really pounded the glass here in the half. And one opportunities as well. They get it into the middle. Eight on the shot clock. 5.35 to go. Anoka doesn't want to bail him out with a foul in the paint. Up and in. Pitzel. 
10 in the half, 15 in the game, 50 to 41. They're above their season average of 48.6, 520 to go. Anoka needs buckets. Driving in, Eppinga had it blocked, threw it back in bounds, down on the deck. We get a timeout, Anoka. Really Five, good to play. Go. I mean, that's a... Uh, Eppinga went down hard. That's that's not awesome the way she went down. Hopefully, uh, you know, she's okay the way, you know, she comes in here. She's looking to drive, looking to get her shot. She gets blocked and then has the wherewithal to still save that one. And it went down awkwardly. And now 50 to 41, 5, 12 to go. And there you see Nick Novak in the huddle. And She, yeah, uh, that's that's a that's a scary injury right there. Yeah, we we had their game against Champlin Park here. Similar thing late in the game. She went down and just trying to walk that, and that that's the leg she has the brace on. Same thing down here in the right corner against Champlin Park. Got banged up and. And now it's just trying to walk that one off, but she'll be out of the lineup, and that makes it even more difficult for the Tornadoes down by nine. Yeah, it's, you know, now now it's a, just a question to watch. Okay, they're down nine. Who's going to initiate the offense? Who's going to, who's you know, it, there's another turnover. Who's going to be the, the player? Is it going to be Drew Peterson? Driving in Jurdy, and she got fouled. That'll be another one on Kuyan. That'll be number four on her. She has had a tough night. No points in either half. That'll be the eighth on the Tornadoes. And, and you know, at this point, yeah, there's uh, Holmgrenson coming back in as Kuyan because with five minutes to go and Eppinga, now it looks like she's going to, you know, she's going to hobble her way back to the bench and she feels good about it. And the free throw up and in by Jurdy and with 5.06 to go, a 10-point game. And I'll reiterate again, 31-30, the Tornadoes climbed right back into it. And since then, Forest Lake has taken over in this game. Jerdy uh, has four, five to go in the game. Here's Peterson. Holmgren send the ninth grade around the floor. Ianni down low, up, off, no good. And the rebound by Fearing. Good rebound position. And now it's Pitzel. Pitzel into the front court. Now Forest Lake in really good shape. They can really work this one around. Jerdy across to Penn. Penn got fouled. And it's realistic that, uh, you know, Forest Lake could be in the double bonus here before we get to the three and a half minute mark as that's the ninth foul on the Tornadoes. That one rattles home for Pent. And Pent now has hit double figures. 5-0 run for the Rangers. Eppinga trying to run around and prove that she's ready to come into the game. And we got a kick ball for us. Or Anoka's going to hang on to it. Evan Eppinga's going to come back in there. She has 17, 7 in this half. And Abby Holmgrenson sits down. It's again, the ninth grader getting some minutes. Ianni in the corner, partially blocked. Weak side rebound controlled by Daru. She's had quite a game, 13 points off the bench for Forest Lake. You know, and one thing we've seen a lot here, you know, the, the, the first half plus. Feet nice down feed. low to Pitzel. But we saw for, you know, uh, halfway into the second half, most Forest Lake possessions saw them put the ball on the floor, you know, once, maybe twice. And uh, now they're getting a little bit more confidence with their spacing, with their shots, with their creating space off the dribble. And, uh, you know, things are just starting to click for Forest Lake. Peterson to miss there, 56-41, 3.49 to go in the game. And Forest Lake into the front court with Jurdy. 
Jerdy down into the corner, Fearing. Back out to Jerdy. Now they get it inside, Pitzel. Pitzel's had 12 and a half, 17 now in the game, and they turn it over. Fifth turnover here in the second half for Forest Lake, uh, 10 on the game. And uh, that trails Anoka's 12 in the game. Ripping a banged up back on the floor, running the point with 3.30 to go. Down by 15. Shoknak. Now it's Peterson off on the right. Inside Ayani trying to get that one away. Can't. Now Wagkinen couldn't get it, a sh or did get a shot away, but it went long. And now Forrest Lake to board and Jerdy into the front court. Coming up on three to go. I don't think the coach would have been happy if Pent would have taken that three right there. That that would they would not been thrilled by that. The clock is your friend. Your ball movement is, has been your friend. You know, let's uh, let's work a good shot. See if we can get to the free throw line. Trying that reverse layup was Jerdy missed at Forest Lake. Another offensive rebound. That's blocked out of there. Peterson gets it ahead, driving in. Eppinger missed it. Tried to bat it away, but Jerdy controlled, and now she'll give it up to Fearing. 2.30 to go. Just one of those nights now for the Tornadoes. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, not, you know, they've had good looks. They've had opportunities. You know, the, the, the rims haven't been super friendly. Extra step there in the corner. That was Fearing. Or, excuse me, that was DeRue. Rare mistake for DeRue. Big night off the bench, averaging 7.9, but she has 13 tonight, 10 in this half. Yeah, you know, it's been an absolutely huge second half for uh, for Daru and and for Pitzel and and uh, you know, you see here as the the lead out to 15 another turnover for the Tornadoes. Coming up on 2 to go in the game. Here's Jerdy on top. Works it ahead. This is Fearing. And skip it across the floor with 2 to go. Trying to get around the corner was Daru and the foul goes on Drew Peterson. That'll be the 10th on the Tornadoes and two free throws coming up. Uh, not a long way to go in the regular season. After tonight, Anoka's got five. Forest Lake has just two, oh, four games remaining in the regular season. That free throw will bounce out of there. One, one more to go for Daru. By the way, in this game, 0 for 3 in the half from the line, 1 for 4 overall. We've got a, so I saw that uh, Eppinga went over to the official and, and asked a question about, about something and caused the officials to have a conversation. She will get one more and Daru knocks it down. 57-41. Shot short, no good. Angel Shabiechi missed the shot. Shabiechi on the floor for the first time tonight. Out of the outside, Jerdy. Down to the middle, fearing. Forest Lake's going to go to 11 and 10. Overall, and we got to fall off the ball. Tornadoes are going to fall to 13 and 8. This non conference tilt. See the coaches there for Forest Lake. That'll be on Shibichi. Well, the good, the good news here for the Tornadoes is, you know, the, as they look at the the standings, I mean, they're they're pretty locked into the three seed in Section 74A. And it, it, it's, it's not really realistic that Forest Lake can move out of the five. So, you know, you, you kind of look at there and, you know, if you're, if you're looking at uh, what you can get, what you can't, uh, you know, where you would see Forest Lake and see a, a team that might have a little confidence against you, it would be in the section championship. Yeah, that means you've got two wins under your belt. And, uh, you know, you, you've, this is probably far enough in the rear view that you can, uh, you can get back. Peterson over to Lag, then into the lane, put it up, got the bucket. Lagkinen has 10 and a half, 11 in the game, timeout 59-43.
And that kind of breaks the spell. An 11-0 run by Forest Lake to put this one away tonight. And once again, we, we mentioned Forest Lake and Anoka and their upcoming schedules. Forest Lake just four to go after tonight. They'll be on the road at Woodbury, then at Moundsview, home to Irondale, and then on the road at Eastridge uh, to close it out. And then for the Anoka Tornadoes, you see the schedule. After tonight, five to go. Elks at Maple Grove. Home to Osseo, on the road to Champlin Park, and on the road to Park Center. But some winnable games there for Anoka. Some winnable games. You know, Elk River's been playing pretty well of, of late. Yep. You know, they uh, they gave Andover a, a, a real test uh, last week on uh, Thursday, I believe. And, you know, obviously Maple Grove is a tough team. But then, you know, the, to be able to finish there, Osseo, Champlin Park, those are, those are kind of your get-right games. And, and uh, you know, let's try and go, uh, go get one at the Park Center gym before uh, we go into section tournament. Yeah, and finish strong, get everybody healthy and in the lineup, and getting Maddie Fracking back in the lineup will certainly be a big help tonight. Uh, not available in the game, averaging 16.8 points and 11 rebounds. Uh, one of three players that average in double figures. Epping leading the way with 20.8, Lacken in 11.9. Lacken came alive here in the second half, but they really missed the scoring punch of Fracking and that third option. So we come up on one to go. That's blocked away by Eppinga. And Forest Lake has it. They really did a great job on the offensive blast here in the second half. They moved the ball well, and that shot off no good by Pitzel. Good feed to her. And now Eppinga in the backcourt with 45 to go. Looked at a three. Now Ianni right at the key is going to drive in, stop. Kick it back out. They get it to Eppinga again. Shoknek sets a pick from the elbow. Further out, Peterson, she'll try the three and rattle one in. Peterson, her second made three tonight. She has five in each half. And it's 49-46 with 30.3 to go. And we have got a lot of stuff coming up here on QCTV. We got boys hoops, uh, galore girls basketball, and then don't forget section of hockey for the girls Kind of to be announced. We'll see how that plays out. And, of course, boys hockey coming up on the end of the regular season. But a lot of hoops here on QCTV, and you see the schedule. Yeah, you know, Blaine versus Champlin Park, you know, should be a, a you know, a, a winnable game for the for the uh, Bengals. But Champlin Park, you know, looking to try and put something together here at the end of the year. Uh, having a non-conference at, at Andover. And then uh, girls basketball next week on the 12th. That'll be Blaine versus Andover, always uh, a good one. That was uh, a good one earlier in the year and uh, should be another good battle uh, between those two crosstown rivals and then wrapping up Maple Grove versus Andover is, uh, you know, kind of one that everybody in Northwest Suburban Conference is circling. Yeah, and then once again, we should point out for people who check out uh, sports here in the northern suburbs on QCTV, uh, the girls hockey section playoffs to be announced. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep you updated on that. Yeah, the, the Section 7 is uh, getting underway here this Saturday. They got a ball on the deck and 25.6. That was lacking and down there. She's okay. She gets the, uh, the benefit of a, a quick held ball call and creates the turnover for Tornadoes. Epping it inbound, lacking in in the corner. They get it outside to Peterson. Epping it. Now Ianni, she's going to drive inside, kick it out, lack it in. And that's stolen away by Fearing. Ten to go in the game. Forest Lake in the front court, epping it with the foul. And we'll get free throws here for Pitzel. Seventeen for Pitzel. Make that 18. She's their leading score. 60 to 46. Tough night for the Tornadoes. She got them both. Epping is going to bring it up the floor with three. Long three off the glass. No good. And that will do it. And the Forest Lake Rangers come to an oak and beat the Tornadoes 61 to 46. They led it 25-21 at the half. And 
and a dominate tonight with Maddie Fracking out of the lineup. Anoka falls to 13 and 8 overall. Forest Lake goes to 11 and 10 on the year. You know, big second half there, uh, really kind of finishing the game. Cassidy Pitzel and and uh, and uh, Haley Derue both uh, coming up big in that second half, and you know, extending a lead at halftime that was was just a handful of points. Uh, what are we? I think we we're 25-21. You know, four point uh, yep. lead at, at halftime, and you know, Forest Lake uh, turning the offense on. That's the, that's not their mo. That, that was what we kind of expected out of Anoka here in the second half. But, uh, you know, good for Forest Lake, uh, you know, getting that confidence and, and taking the, a section win. Anoka, you know, you look back in this one, you're going to say, well, we didn't have fracking. You know, we lost, uh, you know, Eppinga got a little bit uh, banged up. You know, there, there are things that they can improve upon. The turnovers are going to be the one number one thing that uh, Coach Novak's got to address. So Forest Lake, four and double figures. Pitzel, 19, 14 for Derua off the bench. Pent with 11, Damon with 10. Tornadoes end up with three and double figures. Eppinga, 17, 11 for Lackanen. And then Peterson with 10 off the bench here tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Great job by our QCTV crew, led by Ryan Mush. Always fun to work with you, Pete. We'll see you down the road. Absolutely. We'll see you soon, Steve. There he is, Pete Anderson. I'm Steve Thompson. Have a good night.